can we act to effectively tackle climate change? Absolutely, yes. Despite what you might think, we can combat climate change. The technology exists, it's affordable, even during a recession. So how do we do it? We need to move from a high-carbon, high-resource-use-based economy to a low-carbon, high-technology and efficiency-based economy. We can accurately project the amount of greenhouse gases, primarily CO2, that will be entering the atmosphere in the coming decades. This so-called business-as-usual pathway of emissions growth would result in catastrophic temperature rises. The low-carbon pathway on the bottom of the graph takes us on a safer route away from this frightening scenario while also supporting increased economic growth and quality of life. We call this pathway the 450 ppm pathway. By capping the amount of carbon in the atmosphere to 450 parts per million, we stand a 50% chance of staying below the two degrees Celsius global temperature rise, which many scientists and politicians agree is the maximum acceptable. By how much will we have to reduce our CO2 output? To move from the business as usual pathway to the 450 ppm pathway, we would, as you can see, have to reduce the amount of carbon by 17 gigatons by 2020. Reducing this amount of carbon, 17,000 million tons, is a challenge, but it can be done. Really? How? Well, this picture shows how, and it's good news. Here you can see the various policies or levers, which together can account for more than 17 gigatons in 2020. By pulling all these levers, insulating houses, driving electric cars, reducing deforestation, wind power, solar power, etc., it is possible to see how we get to our 17 gigaton goal. The graph shows the positive and negative costs of each of these levers. Many of them actually save money rather than cost money, meaning that if we pull all of the levers, the total cost to society will be pretty close to zero. You say it saves money, but there must be a cost. Yes. All this requires investment. The developed countries recognize their responsibility for the majority of greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere. Because they're richer, they should pay to help the developing world reduce its carbon footprint and adapt to climate change. Of the 17 gigatons of carbon saving we need by 2020, five gigatons worth of the levers we talked about can be pulled in the developed world. The other 12 gigatons have to be dealt with in the developing world. Of these 12, three can be mainly paid for in the developing world through energy efficiency savings. Remember, the levers that save rather than cost money? That leaves the final nine gigatons to be paid for by the developed world. How much will it cost and where will the money be found? It will cost on average 100 billion euros a year between 2010 and 2020. The money will come from a combination of both public finance, money given to the developing world by the developed world, and the carbon markets. By setting ambitious emissions caps, the developed world is essentially setting a price for carbon. The higher the developed countries' emissions caps, the more money will flow from the markets and less from the public sector. So is that it? Just about, yes. Once emission cap levels and finance requirements are settled, then an agreement needs to be made for an institutional framework that brings all the elements of the deal together. Success in global climate change negotiations basically depend on three things. Targets for reducing carbon, finance, and the institutional architecture. So we can act to successfully tackle climate change. Sounds pretty straightforward. So what's all the fuss? Well, whilst politicians agree on the two degrees Celsius target, current proposed efforts only go halfway towards this goal. All the world's current efforts added together still put us on a 550 ppm pathway, meaning that the CO2 emissions continue to increase, a path well beyond two degrees Celsius and towards catastrophic climate change. The longer we wait, the harder and more expensive it becomes to deal with the problem. If we act decisively, we can tackle climate change, but only if we act now.